All right, Celeste. Hey. Let's talk a little bit about pH because pH is so important and you're going to tell us why it's so important, right? It is so important yes. and, and folks just don't realize how important mm -hmm. it is. So I know that we preach uh, with extension and, yes. and many other professions, uh, preach the importance of soil sampling um, before you begin any kind of gardening endeavor, whether that's, you know, vegetable gardening mm -hmm. or landscaping or what have you, um, but it truly is super important. Um, if nothing else, to be able to determine what your pH is right. or the uh, level of acidity in your soil. What pH stands for, it's a little P and a big H. And a big H, yeah. right. <laughs> so that stands for potential hydrogen. Okay. Um, hydrogen is acidic, and so that's just measuring the level of how much uh, potential hydrogen is in your soil okay. um, and telling you whether it's acidic or basic. Um, pH runs on a scale of 0 to 14, mm -hmm. and it's exponential. So, for example, 7 is right in the middle, so right. that's what we're going to call neutral. Anything below 7 would be considered acidic, mm -hmm. or old, some old-timers say it's sour. Yes, yeah? sour. So, it's sour or <laughs> right. acidic. Anything above mm -hmm. is basic, right. alkaline, or, uh, again, sweet. sweet. You may refer to right. it as sweet versus sour. Um, so that's kind of how it goes. Now, if we're looking at a pH, if we tested our soil and it came back a pH of 5, mm -hmm. and we were going to compare that to another area that came back with a pH of 6, it doesn't appear to be that much difference because you're thinking, well, it's just one number, right. you know, different. But like I said, it's on an exponential scale. So that's a pH point. of 5 is really 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6. Likewise, if you move up to a 7, a five would be a hundred mm -hmm. times more acidic. So every full single number mm -hmm. that you move up, you're you know moving exponentially. So it really right. does make a big difference, um, and it's important for us to know what we're starting with so we can adjust properly. You're exactly right, and I'm glad you mentioned that because people think it's so easy because they see the one number, yeah, five to six. Oh, it's just one. Yeah. Right. So. Or even you know you're never really going to get those even numbers anyway. You right. could get like a. 5.4 or sure. 6.2 or something right. like that and <laughs> and they'll think well uh, there can't be that much difference between a 6.0 and a 6.5 but again even those decimals mm -hmm. are uh, are need to be taken into account That's when you're difference. thinking about the exponential scale. All right good stuff. So what causes an acidic soil though? Well there's lots of different situations. Okay. So in West Tennessee, a lot of soils are naturally acidic. Mm -hmm. And that is just determined by the parent material that your soil was made out okay. of. So like mm -hmm. the bedrock that, you know, was degraded and now has become mm -hmm. your topsoil. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is dependent upon that. Um, there are also some practices that humans do <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that could create uh, acidic <laughs> soils. Right. So let's think about... Um, there's lots of development going on, yes. and so anytime topsoil is removed, mm -hmm. you're removing some of the uh, natural amendments of the soil, and, exactly. and you could end up with a more acidic soil. Um, new homes, uh, lots of times when they remove that topsoil, and then they're backfilled with what they think might be topsoil, but it isn't really. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not exactly. <laughs> right. Right. They could end up with acidic soils that way. Also, um, just continued use of land. Mm -hmm. uh, plants are taking uh, soluble nutrients out of the soil. So things like, you know, potassium, magnesium, uh, calcium, and when those are removed from the soil solution or even removed from water, if you're having lots of rain or something like that, those can be replaced with right. those hydrogen ions, which increases the acidity of your soil. Okay. So any kind of land that's in continuous use, um, might have the potential to be low, uh, have a low pH or have a more acidic soil. Okay. All right, so what are the benefits of sampling in the fall, though? Right. I mean, because you can sample anytime, yeah, correct? Yeah. But the fall mm -hmm. just tends to be a little better, you think? Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah. You can sample any time of the year sure. and you can amend any time of the year. But yeah. for me, um, most of the time, especially if we're talking about vegetable gardening, okay. you know, we're, right. we've got to have some forethought with this. You want to start a new site in the spring or you had problems in your garden site this past year and you want to uh, try to get ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Sample in the fall 
Um, the lab is usually slower. <laughs> it is. It is in the fall. It is. Because in the spring, statement. in the spring is when people are getting geared oh, up yeah. usually, and so they're sending in lots of samples. So the lab is generally a little slower. You can get your results a little faster. Our soils tend to be drier in the fall, mm -hmm. and it when you send in a soil sample, it really needs to be dry. Okay. If it's not dry when it gets to the lab, then they have to let it dry. So that could add a few days onto okay. your sampling time. Um, and then of course. If you live in West Tennessee, like we do, mm. here in the Mid South, yes. <laughs> or in the Mid South in general, mm -hmm. I guess I should say, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> your soils are going to naturally be on the more acidic right. side. So we're looking at probably around six to six point five, could even be lower. You okay. know, just depending upon where you are. So if we need to amend that pH and raise it, um, we're going to do that by adding lime, and lime takes time to change. Sure. Uh, the chemistry of the soil. It's not something that's going to happen immediately. So that's why I like to test in the fall so you can go ahead and get that lime on the ground now and by the time spring comes around you've already started that process of changing okay. the chemical you know makeup. Uh, so it'll be ready to go for the most part because it gets weathered in and broken down. Right, okay. yes, yes. Well, I got that. So that's why I prefer fall. Okay, uh, while we have a little time left, suggested pH for plantings though. Yes. What are some of those? Okay, so if we're looking at like lawns, okay. I would say most turf grasses, uh, six to six point eight. I mean, you could go a little lower. Okay. Um, don't want to go too much higher. Uh, they tend to kind of prefer some of that okay. acidic acidic soils. Areas that are naturally kind of like wooded, if you have a wooded lot around your home, right. those soils are going to be naturally more acidic because they're having a lot of leaves and things right. that falling and yeah, decomposing. decomposing. Right. Um, so that would be common, you okay. know, for that type of area. Gardens, vegetable gardens in general, again, we're looking at probably 6.0 to 6.8, okay. somewhere around that area, where you want to really make sure you have... Um, more extremely acidic soils will be for crops like blueberries. Yes. Yeah. So yes. there you'd be looking at like 4.8 to 5.2. Yes. Man, low. Yeah. Okay. So if you test an area and you're not sure what you want to do with that piece of your property and it comes back low okay. in that range, maybe you would want to plant blueberries there because then you don't have to fight with amending that pH um, because pH doesn't stay changed. You know, right. you have to stay on top of it and That's continue right. um, to amend it if you want to move the natural point. level of that, that pH of that soil. Okay. Well, since you're there, let's quickly talk about how do you adjust the soil pH then? Oh, okay. Right. Definitely. So, um, we can really only know amounts if we get our soil sample, like how okay. much we need to add. So that's another reason why it's so important. If we're wanting to raise pHs okay. nearer to seven, you've gotten a six soil and you need to raise it nearer to seven, you're going to add lime. Okay. Um, right. For homeowners, uh, pelleted lime is going to be the product of choice. Sure. It's easy to apply, um, but then again, you know, it takes time to do its thing. Okay. We, I would not put more than 50 pounds per thousand square feet out at a time. Interesting. Okay. Because there, there again, you may be getting a lot of waste mm. if you over apply. Okay. If you put 200 pounds out, it's not all going to be able to do its thing. Right, gotcha, so gotcha. sometimes if we have a drastic adjustment, you may have to split up that application into two or three applications throughout the year. Okay. So apply the, the first one now, wait two or three months, apply Lying. it again, yeah, wait two or three sense. months, apply it again, and then retest okay. um, to see where you've gotten yourself to and how much more you need, you need to go from there. If you have, um, if you're trying to go the opposite way and lower your pH, mm -hmm. <laughs> say that you have a spot that tests like 6.8, but you really want to grow blueberries there, or you really want to grow some acidic shrubbery there, uh, plants that prefer acid soils like azaleas, rhododendrons, mm -hmm. hollies, right. um, things like that. Adding sulfur right. can get you uh, down to that lower pH area where okay. you want to be. And that's that elemental elemental sulfur. Elemental sulfur mm -hmm. uh, can do the job. I, I probably wouldn't want to use that um, every single time. Okay, okay. Aluminum sulfate uh, right. will do it as well. Um, so, you know, either product. And it just depends. There again, you need to have results from your soil sample to know how much you need to move. But as a rule of thumb, I think it's like 
6.2 pounds per hundred wow. square feet <laughs> to move it a tenth of, wow, a, okay. of a pH point. So it's you know going to take some calculations and some time, but we need to know what we're starting with before we start adding. Well, garden math. I know, garden math. How about that? I'm always bringing math to the scene. I'm always bringing math. You have to have the garden math. So you, so you can do the math, right? <laughs> All right, so that's, we appreciate it. That was good information, so thank you much. Thanks. All Thanks right. for having me. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.